the necessity is the overwhelming <laughs> voice <laughs> right the, the necessity we probably should frame this a little uh, i guess we could frame <laughs> no, it a little bit yeah no. <laughs> um at some point i was going to stop and say hey what do we want to make sure to talk about but then we just started rolling of course right but like what so so the conversation up to this point just to fill people in on it you know and i'm sure all of this kind of ultimately because everything is about everything connected to everything else of course um you can pull on any thread and we're going to get to what we end up talking about but the thread that we started pulling on was just this sense of of you talking about where you live in a rural area and that right you're having a like a situation where somebody's possibly dying in your family and that all of your family essentially like for generations have lived in this area and like, and I, I was tuning into just that sense of like, God, that is so, it's getting rare and rare and rare. I like in America, especially in the West, West of Mississippi, it's, it's really something, especially here in, in San Francisco, it's, it's so odd that anybody's from here, right? Let alone mm -hmm. stays in one place more than a generation, right? And and, you know, talking with you about like, well, what is it, you know, <laughs> your, your, your mother who is your mother who, who, when she was a kid, it was, t you know, 20 me 20 meters away or whatever was like a far, was a far, a far distance, but yet your father in your village is somebody who was one of the first people with the computers when computers started to come in, in the, in the early nineties. And so his, he's got an openness to the technology right to it but he was he really went from this place of like a rural gr growing up in a rural place to this kind of taking on technology and the way he sees the world and then you having opened up right and philosophically and just asking about what they make of what your family makes of you right what, how they interpret you and so this is kind of the conversation that we've been having right of of this and in, in, in this way that you were just kind of going into the sense of like, well, philosophically, what does that mean to be awake to something like philosophy or to be woken up by philosophy, if you want to use those metaphors? And that's when you started talking about, well, you know, someone who's awake to philosophy, what that really means is this is, 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 is responding to a certain kind of necessity or a particular kind of necessity that you feel obligated or have an instinct towards responding to and that response and seeing that response is a very different response to say something like your grandmother who's like never left the property or something right like for generation your generations and generations right it's a very different world yeah yeah mm -hmm. and and right this this is also right this this the, 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 there's this confusion also then about needs and necessities right mm -hmm. this has also to do with scholae in, in a sense right because a measure of when we have a measure of sufficiency and we can also kind of like um discern what what needs we, we have to attune ourselves to yeah. what are higher needs and what are lower needs yeah. so this is really when, right when Nietzsche then talks about that that kind of like um we, we're becoming last men and we just we, we just attune ourselves to like lower needs yeah right food games and these things um and really really like like the, the lowest not the lowest needs but really just the basic needs yeah um and then everything that right everything that that is beyond that a higher need a need for religion for example a need for a need for philosophy a need for right a connection to something that is beyond all of that that gives right that, that homes us in, in, in a broad sense that that, yeah. that that makes the world the world that that kind of like um is uh, Perhaps we can say, right, this, this is so strange because we live in the simultaneity of worlds in, in, in our time. Yeah. There are still, there are still, right, there are still, or there have still been, there have been people who kind of like 
had that access, but it's kind of like by 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 turning our world into this gestell, into this into this standing reserve, into this right in this where it's just in this in this uncanny real work, as Nietzsche said, then we we also lose we, we lose this attunement to those higher needs. And when I were, I for me this higher need is so is very is very present all the time. And I I don't know how it would have been for like say, my grand great grandmother who lived in this rural village like all her life, right? She, she she like today we have these these needs and necessities like you have to travel all the time and like you have to I don't know you you have to have a lot of experiences so you can share them on Facebook or so on Instagram and that that's really that seems really to be really an, a necessity that people right have they really they have to do this to feel an obligation and perhaps in the in like in like 100 years ago there was just this necessity perhaps to keep to keep to keep this to participate in this in this cycle of life yeah yeah with with sincerity right and right. and not to not to um and there was right that, that perhaps even in heidegger's where Heidegger grew up, because in, in Heidegger's, the, the, where there, there was this large cathedral, right? The, the, the St. Martin's Church, which is really famous for its bells. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It has really, it was one of the, mm -hmm. the largest bells, I think, in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of like, there is one text of Heidegger where he talks about the mystery of the bell tower mm -hmm. and that the kind of like the, the ringing of the bell is kind of like um, con unconcealing, uh, kind of like an order to life, a rhythm to life. Uh, mm. uh, uh, right, yeah. that 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 they all that they all were able to participate in, yeah. no matter of philosophical background or so, no matter what profession they all had. But yeah. there was a kind of like he, he talks about a swinging that or, or a ringing that is kind of like going through all of the hearts of the people who live there. That's so kind cool. of like kind of like connecting them all together and, and making them participate in this in this order. Um, mm. And there 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 is perhaps this this other other let's say that the other need that I'm kind of like talking about, which right we we today we. We can't listen to this anymore. We can't tune ourselves. In. Most right. of us, right? Most right. Well, it's a, as you're talking, uh, one of the things I, I remember when I, I think it was what the name of the town in the U.S. There's, I think it's um, it's St. Petersburg. I can't remember which what the name of the town is, but a friend of mine moved, and it's a town that they've done a lot of they they've um, passed a lot of ordinances to not build anything new in this particular most of the town so it's basically the same architecturally it's basically the same structure as it was in like 1650 or something right so in the u.s that's really old that's old right and he's got a sailboat and we were we were going away and he said if you look out there and I remember, i'll never forget this moment because she said like if you look out there notice like the highest points of the city and they were all they were all the crosses they were all the tops of the churches. And, and I remember seeing that. And I remember being so struck by this sense of kind of awe about that, of, of, this, of this sense. Whenever you would look up, the whole stack would be, it's almost like getting kind of an ontological chiropractic adjustment, <laughs> right? Because if mm. you ever wanted to know what the high, the peak, the highest ideal, right, it was you just looked up and everything was organized around that. You can just see the whole town, right? And everything was, it had a certain kind of order and cosmos to it. And I remember get, I, sensing that and feeling this kind of some strange belonging in me of like, I, I, it, it's a, it, it'd be easy. I can, I can get how people could get really nostalgic for such things, right? Because it struck me as so different than like anything that I understand. Yet there's something in me that understands that such that can feel longing for it, 
right? And so when you talked about the bells, and I guess that makes sense because it's like, I, although I, that was a visual experience, the bell is even some, somehow more powerful because then you really get the sense of a, of a, of a, of a like a, <laughs> an acoustical attunement that goes even through the buildings and, and vibrates all the buildings. So there's a sense in where, where you don't even have to look at it. It's just, you, you don't even have to hear it without it, with, without it attuning you in some sense. So this kind of way where a whole people can, can live in that rhythm is just so striking to me. We, we talked about yesterday in, in, the, in Johannes Heidegger seminar, we talked briefly about clocks and right the, like even like the, the, the ringing of the bell, this was kind of like how, how rural people back then organized their time. Yeah. didn't have ordinary clocks. They were more orient. They were like the, ori the, the, the bells and when they were ringing the bells, that was kind of like giving the orientation. And that mm. also changed seasonally. So there were there were there are differences in how you and, and for example that that's a funny thing but I don't know if you know that but in in Catholicism like um, during the Easter these three days where 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 Jesus died mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then he was resurrected after three days mm -hmm. there for example there's the, the 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 bells are flying to Rome. That's what we say in Catholicism, and and during that there's a there's kind of like a, a tradition in in Bavaria and where I live, where we then have these these wooden machine. It's it's like it's like it's hard to describe. It's it's like these wooden things that make a lot lot of wood noise, as if you're like wood on wood, and it's it's like it's like that. Yeah. And yeah. You instead of like ringing the bell, they're like boy, the boys and the children of the the town or the village, kind of like go around in the in the in through the village and kind of mm. like making this noise instead of instead of the ringing of the bell. Mm. So so just mm. just to write just that someone is doing the the right the the, the time architecture so to say. Yeah. And, right. and that was really that was really important back then because right. right people were really like organizing the time structure according to the bells. I mean today we all have clocks and, and you see the time everywhere, mm -hmm. but like it's kind of like when when I don't know when when it's the mid of the day or when it's the break of the day or the dawn of the day. That was all announced by uh, mm. the, the the ringing of the bell, so to say. Wow, interesting. This is really interesting. So this, this, and this starts to get at what you talked about where you mentioned Skole. So I'm in the middle of it. I've been working on an article talking about what I think. Let's, let's, let's sit on that just a little bit. I'd love to hear more about this because you're, what you're, what you're, what you're saying is one of the differences, right, that we can see in our actual lives or in these differences in generations, let's say, right, where you can see somebody like your parents who have lived on a farm and have their families lived there and they, they've never left the they've never left the village right that there's a certain kind of world that they live in and something that they're always responding to in some sense attuned to that has the, all of their rhythms organized around a history right and a set a set of what what's ringing their bell and the bell that rings it if we if we could say we could say that and that there's modernity right which is which is this this way in which in some senses there's what what we're responding to what occurs for us as necessary right is in some sense yeah. Yeah. There, that sense of the bell going off we don't, it's not yeah. like we have a very clear bell, right? But we, but we still have the structure of response, right? And so one of the things that you, one of the words that you mentioned that I'd love to just hear more about this too, is this, this, this relationship to Skole, right? What Skole is, right? Maybe what it's not, what it's been construed or construed of and what it's turned into, let's say, 
right? Versus what the original sense of skole in the Greeks and it's in its relationship to temporality and time. Because this that's fascinating to me. Because I, I have a feeling when I look at the circling practices and some of these some of these things that, that like the language of of the language of practice, um, you know, Verveke's ecology of practices, in some sense is an attempt to respond to this loss of the bell, right? Um, and to think about circling in some sense is, is, is that maybe what we're actually practicing is not a behavior, but a, what we're practicing is a different way of being in time, more of a school sense of time and what that even means. So I'd love to just, I'd love to hit on that a little bit. Sure. Um, by the way, stop. Um, so right, Dejanaro says in, in Principles of Philosophy that right, before, before we, we start even thinking about what a polis is, what a city is, and these, that there must be this, this realm or, 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 or field of, of scole. Because only there we can, I, I think that, that that's what it's about. There is where we can really have a relationship with these, these things like time, finitude, but also beings in themselves as themselves. Yeah. Where we can really, and, and also then right, where we can play, we can love, we can, but we, we can also, and, and what you said, right, with the villages, um, polis, so democracy for the Greeks did not mean that everyone was equal, but that everyone had an equal relation to the, to the principle of the polis that was, so to say, grounding the polis, holding the polis. Right. Um, in polis in the sense of like, a pole, the way the pole is the center in which things turn exactly. around, right? So yeah. No, no matter, no matter if you like were the 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 richest guy in the village, mm. or like you were just you were just like not so rich. I don't know. <laughs> um, they, they they were all right. You, you were all equal in the sense that you had all access to the pole. And right, that even when we go to church, usually there is not really a, a big <laughs> distinction there, like. You're, we are all equal before God in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we all practice that as well. And I think every, every practice should be mindful of that, to be in that sense open to anybody and not yeah. be ex ex like exclusive or so. Um, so scholar structures, scholar is that field that structures all of these relations and also attunes, I would say, our, our needs and our, our measure of sufficiency. So right, Johannes' translation of Scholae's measure of sufficiency. Mm -hmm. But we have to practice that all the time, more or less. Every day, every single day, we have to practice this holding. Yeah. Because this, right, this principle is so... Um, so it's not... I mean, I think that Gennaro talks about it's fleeting, yeah. um, but we, 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 right, that, that's, you do meditation or you do prayer or you do all these religious practices, you do yeah. them all, you do them every day when you right. start and when you go to bed. Yeah. And what I think what they give us is a, is a measure of sufficiency. So we can also, right, we can also discern needs. So we don't, mm. If we, because if we don't have this discernment and if we don't have the attunement to a higher principle, what, what will happen is, is first that we will just give in to lower needs. Yeah. Which yeah. When, whenever, whenever we can, whenever we pursue them, we don't know when to stop pursuing them. Yeah. So whenever I buy something or consume something, I never know really when to stop, when it's right. sufficient, when it's... Yeah. And it's okay to stop. And then we leave, come in the will to will and these things. Um, but what also happens is that I have this anxiety all the time within me. Because when, when, we, when we replace this principle of scole, let's say with the principle of power and everything's organized and, and power becomes, for example, pole. Then I read, and today, right, when you go to New York or so, then everyone has status anxiety all the time. Because yeah. they, they, they can never, they, they never find rest mm. Mm. and they never find sufficiency. 
yeah. because this principle that gives us an access towards the measure of sufficiency has also collapsed yeah and when heidegger was for example then talking about the bell tower then perhaps we can say that the mist so the title right the title of this short talk was the mystery of the bell tower so, so and and um mm. Perhaps this there, there is he talks about he talks about the fuge. Fuge is kind of like his way of not talking about something that is there's a system there, but there's an, an order there. And, and re remember that for, for Heraclitus, logos was not conceived of as in truth, but conceived of as an order. Yeah. So the, yeah. the, the, the very old meaning of logos is order, something yeah. right there's there's an order to, to life, there's an order to things, just as we have four seasons, for example, yeah. right? there's an order that you can't, yeah. you can't change that, and we have to write, we, we, we are born and we have to die, that's also an order that we can't change. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And today, right, today, when we see a transhumanism and, and all of these things, and like, you see how the, the we, how we lose the access towards that structuring or guiding principle that also mm -hmm. kind of like structures life in the polis and right. doesn't make us such in a way that that we become atlantis so right well we, what johannes was often in 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 the in the idleness course he often talked about this example of atlantis mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was atlantis perished because the 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 they had no principle kind of like plato mm -hmm. distinguishes atlantis with the principle as as of water mm. with with Athens, which has the principle of earth mm. right water is water has this characteristic right it doesn't give you a ground yeah you're always yeah. you're always floating all the time yeah and then yeah. then in atlantis like um they also they that's what also the genaro says right that they they all they create surrogates all the time for example like the 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 descriptions of like the the harbor is active all the time yeah because they're right they they have to trade all the time yeah because only that that trading gives them value right but they can't they can't have a rest and also like the, for example what i remembered from that crucius dialogue was that the the elaborations for example of the palace were really like it was just great and everything but there's this then this certain kind of like of decadence so we just pursue the more for the sake of the more so to say that is all that is all implied if we don't have a measure of sufficiency well in Athens they had this hey. because Athens was was the principle that that Plato um, gives as a comparison to to water in Atlantis mm. was earth in Athens mm. and earth right earth is giving us a root mm. earth is giving us stability mm. and that's also right in this in this in this mythological tale that that, that was also then Athens was kind of like um Atlantis had to, they, they went to, uh, to war with Athens, but they lost. Yeah. It's kind of like when you don't have measure of sufficiency, you, you also perhaps then go to war if, if, you, if you, you fall into this kind of like state of inner chaos, inner torment, in, inner turmoil almost. Yeah. And it's also right, it's also what happens now in a weird way. Yeah. We also, right, we all have this inner conflict and everyone's depressed mm -hmm. and, um, you, you right you you also read every, everything's polarized in our society today and it's um and even right when we have these things like right like 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 facebook or so because they don't give us real friendship for example you just pursue more and more friends which you also don't have really a friendship with yeah and and yeah. all of these important dimensions of human life friendship love um right how we we also uh, how we treat our children but also the elderly um how we we have a relationship with time and with beings and all of that kind of like all of that like scola is homing all of that all of yeah. those relations that we have yeah yeah and there's a sense with scola it gets as you get closer and closer into scola things get more and more paradoxical right, start to line up more in this kind of paradoxical, almost mystical way, right, yeah. which is, yeah. and it's, this is one of the things I was, you know, this, this sense of measure, right, mm. this sense of, you know, it just struck me when you talked about the loss of that sense of measure, 
doesn't mean that we stop measuring or we stop, right? Or that we stop um, having a hierarchy of some sense. This is what's really interesting to me. So for example, if, if, the, if the bell tower <laughs> stops ringing, it doesn't mean that everything just goes into total chaos. No, there's a way that we'll still be religious. <laughs> we'll still have a bell, but it'll be a bell that doesn't have any, it'll be, a, it'll fall into a certain, like for example, with power, some kind of measure, something will be measured that runs now as this kind of cult of status and this anxiety of status that you were talking about that in New York, everybody kind of is running around anxious about, right? not even questioning what has them anxious exactly. It's just kind of the way that reality lays itself out in a certain way, right? That people are in response to that. Mm. So that's one of the things that's really interesting to me is this, is this way of that we're still, even, you know, human beings are always, we're always, it, it, the structure of response doesn't go away, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's that when, in some sense, when, when the bell that gets rung, right, is one that it becomes something that is, well, it becomes idolatry, essentially, right? And one of the things about, I think what I understood in terms of Skole is, is it's, 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 and you mentioned this too, is the way that Plato talked about like, well, Athens had a principle, the polis, right? A principle around which things turned and the measure upon which things organized themselves. But when you, it, and one's likely to think of that is like, well, then that thing in the center of the pole is super clear, but it's a strange, it's a strange clarity as you get closer to that, as you get closer to that, that pole, the center of that pole, things get more and more enigmatic and strange, right? Like, and that's the thing about, this is, uh, this is start, I think this is the, the, wor the world of mysticism. This is where like, in, in some sense, the shamans, right? The, the medicine men, the, 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 the mystical crazy poets, right? The ones that have this affinity for like drinking the unknown, right? Like where things kind of get and this is, I think, as we get closer to that, when you, as, as you, as you participate in things that allow the, um, the unsaid to, to, to come into relationship with, 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 with the ineffable in some sense, as you get closer to that, you could say is, 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 is more and more, you get closer to the domain of Skole, right? Because Skole has this, in it, it, its, it's been translated through the years, right? As, as um, uh, leisure, right? As, as or, or, or idleness, which I don't, as, I, as I've been looking at it, those things really don't do it. Like the, they really don't get to skole in the, in the Greek original sense. In some sense it's leisure is, leisure is what you're left with when you have free time. Yet, yeah. Skole in its originality isn't, isn't about a time that's free once you get all the work done, right? It's no, it's more about what is it that's temporal, <laughs> right? It's like, what is that which has time arise in the first place? And so, so rituals of Skole and living in Skole has, has to do with like, in some sense, um, that way that Jeff, Ivo de Janeiro talks about a philosophical principle being ontological in the sense that as you get closer to it, it's not like you can get clear about it in some verbal sense, some representational sense. It's precisely where representations both break down and yet receive their intelligibility. So mm -hmm. that's that, that sense of things. And that's one of the things, one of the reasons I think the notion of dialogos is a kind of school light. And I think it's like, as, as I've been understanding this more circling, meditation, these practices, looking at it through that lens of like, kind of in some sense, the very source of temporality, right? The very source of time. Um, it, it starts to make sense, right? In participating in those isn't, isn't it, is, is not something separate that you do once everything else is done. It's like, in some sense, it's it's remembering 
that everything that I'm doing and the outcome of what I'm doing at the same thing, the ends and the means, right? Become, become, there's something very regenerative, but it's not like it gets clear. It gets more mysterious as you, as you move towards it, as you can kind of see it in my speaking, it's, it's like things fall apart. It's very difficult to describe. I'm just telling of it. It's, yeah. Um, I read, I read Heidegger's short text, The Field Path. Again, I mean, I read it the last time in February, but I read it again like yesterday or so. And then he talks also, he talks about, he, he walks around on, on, the, on the field path near his town. Mm -hmm. And then he talks about the mystery of the simple. So he says in the, in the kind of like in the ever like, that is kind of like flagrant, let's say in all beings yeah. that abide around the field path. There is the mystery of the, the simple that kind of, like, I think he says something like it speaks to the origin that is always inexhaustible and that's always mysterious. What, what, really what you just said. Mm -hmm. So, so, and that, that's, that's so, it's also for me, it's so fascinating, right? So, so the more, right, how we, we kind of like, we get clear about that, or we see how beings are really participating with that principle, the more is also like, the more the, the inexhaustibility, the bottomlessness, right? Nishitani, for example, I, I was just throw this out. Yeah. In Buddhism, they talk a lot about the, the bottomlessness of things. Like this is kind of like also then what, what the mystical philosophers, you totally right, like, like Eckhart, Böhme, Schelling, like on this, in this tradition of German mysticism, they all talk about the Ungrund. There's, and th this is not the abyss of horror, it's kind of like Nietzsche face, but it's more this, this no ground that's always generative and inexhaustible. And to this principle, they all, right, they, they all, by, by our practice, by our religious practice, let's say also by dialogos, we all, we all hold ourselves and participate with that principle. Mm -hmm. But it's always because it's always inexhaustible. We we it's always right. It's 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 withdrawing and and showing at the same time. Yeah, and that's kind of like also right. It's why it's mysterious. Um, yeah. But it right. It has to be inexhaustible. Um, but also right because it's withdrawing as well. And I think that now would say I think it's fleeting. Yeah. or it's overclose or something yeah. um that that's why that's why paideia so paideia is pies in greek means child so yeah. paideia is is comes the, the modern word would be pedagogy yeah so paideia is this ability to hold yourself in that principle in that mm. field of the principle um Idea, and, the ability to hold yourself in the principle. I think, I think the idea of the principle. Yeah. Something like that. Um, yeah. And that, that's why, right? That's why Skole, also, right? The word then Skole became was school. Mm -hmm. And right in, in school, we yeah. learn also, right, to hold ourselves. Yeah. That's why in, in, in old, in, in my, right, in my country, I don't know, there's always like, for example, there's always a, the, the sign of the cross is in every in every classroom. Mm -hmm. I know if that's in, also in America, but um, if we say let's let's say God, then even in the classroom, you, you were kind of like attuned towards that that principle. Let's say that mm -hmm. that gives measure to everything. Um, yeah. But but education, really in the in the deep sense, would would provide you with practices so such you such that you can hold yourself whether this is meditation or dialogos or writing right mm. heidegger i mean heidegger is right he, mm. he wrote like all the time mm. all of these things um give you um and give you that holding such that you can have a, an attunement towards that principle 
And that's also the thing, the reason why the Gennaro often he talks about the tuning, he talks about tuning and like the, yeah. his other book, this, the weirdness of being, he talks about the tuning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In attunement, there's this tuning going on. What, yeah. the, right? We, 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 we are all the time attuned to something mm -hmm. like, uh, kind of like it's in an ontological sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that principle also tunes us and mm -hmm. makes us in that sense then also sufficient, like so that we can rest. And... Yeah. So holding, there's the, these terms that are just so ev evocative <laughs> yet mysterious at the same time. So you use the word like four or five times the sense of holding yeah attunement let, let me just turn on the lights i think okay. my, my picture is blurry I think. okay yeah you got it okay now my, my camera shouldn't be make it blurry all the time yeah, totally <laughs> totally well, you're just dissolving in and out of things you know, and scrolling right now. <laughs> so this, so th these words, some of these words that you're using were so evocative yet mysterious to me, right? This way, this sense of scole, right? In some sense, orienting to something like the bell or what the bell symbolizes, right? And holding ourselves in relationship to the principle so, so this sense of holding yourself, what, what do you mean by that? What are you getting at with that? We, uh, I'm right. All of these things are so mysterious. Yeah. More and more. more, and yeah. more. Today, today I read a book, a new book by Byung Chul Han, this philosopher, this Korean German philosopher who is really like, he writes a lot about Heidegger. A Korean German philosopher. Yeah, he's from Korea, but. Uh -huh. he, like, like I think, I think Chris, Chris and John, they have read some books of, of his. They're really, they're really good. They're really, they're, mm. they're, they're short and crispy and, and intelligent and, mm -hmm. and thought provoking. Really great. And re really good books. Um, so he, he published a new book where it talks about the non things, right? Because in these, all these information things, which we are surrounded by today all the time, we can't, we can't hold them. We can't touch them, right? Yeah. We can't have a grasp on them. Um, so he talks about the hand, and he talks. Do you mean? Do you know what di digital comes from? Digitus. Digitus is, means finger in Latin. Mm. And Heidegger mm. apparently distinguishes the fingers from the hand. Mm. So we we like everything. What you could do just with your fingers, mm. that was like no good. Like like for example, like he, Heidegger was really an he 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 hated these right these typing machines yeah yeah he said you you had to write with your hand yeah. otherwise otherwise the the essence or the binding of language would not come to you yeah yeah so yes <laughs> yes, so yes he talks about the hand right holding also has a lot to do with our hands and even when you talk right the hands are always there mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right <laughs> um and even right right um when you do meditation mm -hmm. and when you do prayer yeah like this is really important right your hands yeah. are closed right and um Byung Chul Han thinks that's because um we have to kind of like our our everything what we do with our, our fingers are the most sensible things we have mm -hmm. on, in our bodies mm -hmm. we have to shut them down mm -hmm. <laughs> We have to otherwise we, we can't find rest yeah that's why we have to do this when we pray and we have to oh, do this when we do meditation so this 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 apparatus is now shut down we can now we can now we can explore what's what's opening up within yeah. ourselves so yeah. so that's why i also think that's that this, really, this position of the buddha right when it sits, sits in the lotus um that's also right that's that's a very that's a that's one of the earliest forms of intelligibilizing intelligibility and holding yourself in that intelligibility just by Ooh. sitting down just as right as perhaps the the christians do it with the prayer and how the 
how the、mm. the Greeks did it with with or, or with poetry,、mm. with writing those fragments,、yeah. um, with on then with Plato, of course, with having those dialogues. Yeah, and then with Socrates, right, being in aporia in paradox, and right because you said it, right, we, we are all the time in paradox when we encounter this principle. Yeah, because right, the the ineffable, we we the finite meet the infinite. Yeah, or we the temporal meet the eternal.、Yeah. We are always in paradox. Then,、yeah. so one more thing, skole comes from ehe. Hain means、um, hold to hold, right?、Oh, right. So right, we are also right for Aristotle. We are the the we are the the animals, the beings that hold ourselves in language.、Right. Um, and Byung Chul Han in this book, he also talks about the right. We, he doesn't think about like language has a has almost a body to it,、mm -hmm. uh, right?、Mm -hmm. I think even Sevi in this dialogue that he had with you on your channel, he also talks about the body and the texture of language and、mm -hmm. the right, the fabric of language. That was that was really、oh, so、yeah. That, that was that was super cool. And Byung Chul Han in this book that I read today, he also talks about it in that yeah. way. Yeah, there's almost an there was almost an angelic body. Coburn talks about the angelic、yeah. body of like the the poems and these things. Yeah. So that's really that's really cool.、Um, but but scolé so means means right comes from to hold,、mm -hmm. and even the word dharma. So that is that's this also that's this that means also order or law in right in in Buddhism in in like Eastern.、Um, When we we talk about Eastern concepts, even the word the word dr from from Dharma, this word dr means also to hold. Interesting, yeah. So so even there, there's a holding aspect to it. And for example, Nishitani describes beings in the field of Shunyata, which is for me very similar to the field of Skolé. He also talks that. There and only there, beings can hold themselves in themselves as themselves, and have, and then then also they find a measure of sufficiency. They find a they find they 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 really they rest within themselves, and that's that's perhaps when you right when you look at the Buddha,、yeah. just sitting and、yeah. and being being in this in this samadhi position.、Yeah. That's this that's this deep rest、yeah. where you also where then also. I mean, Nishitani says, and then you are bottomlessly in time,、yeah. as time, which means you have to, you have to deep, you have to the deepest participatory knowing or the deepest participation with time yeah. and being. Yeah. And but there, where it, again, there again, we we need to practice this all the time, such that、yeah. we have this 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 deep hold, which、yeah. then gives us. Um, which provides us a, 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 a participatory relationship with with time and finitude and life and death and、yeah. love and all of these things. Yeah. What's so interesting is you're talking about this. This basically what I'm hearing you say is, in all, multiple traditions and scholars from Jewish mysticism to, like, what the way Aristotle talks about it to 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 Corban and and the Sufis. This, there's something about this that what seems to be core is this holding, and this way that you just talked about. I'd never heard that before about the digits, digital, the digits, and that how Heidegger wanted to go, like tie those things up. We、we'll、get back to the hands. Don't, don't, yeah, don't get, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that that's why he even starts in being in time, right? He starts with things that are. Present at hand. He really started、yeah. with the hands, the hand, in a very deep way, in a very deep way. And it's so interesting, as you know, as we're talking, my wife is holding the、yeah. our 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 boy who is like just about a week and a half old, and having him. All we're doing, everything that's kind of organizing our life right now, is. In relationship to holding this baby, literally, figuratively, metaphorically, on all levels, and it's so interesting to me that the the human being、uh, and I, this is really this is I have been thinking about this for years. There's something so telling to me 
and inexhaustible in the sense that for human being, how we all start off is like we're the, I mean, in terms of for our life form, infants are the most helpless, vulnerable, dependent by far, right, of any other mammal, right? We're like the human infant is like the most by itself can't, can barely breathe on its own, right? So everything, everything, this is how we start off. But there's this kind of, but yet that very vulnerability and helplessness affords, right, this relationality to things that allow that vulnerable, that vulnerability allows us to be vulnerable to time, to language, to, to knowing that we know we're vulnerable to our own awareness. All the things that afford us to kind of essentially fly to the moon and understand that we understand that vul- it has to do with that vulnerability and in, in, in a relationship to that vulnerability. And so as you're talking about this sense of holding ourselves, right? Getting closer and closer to the principle, right? And, and holding ourselves in right relationship to that principle, being held by the principle and having the principle hold us, right? As we hold it in this ever deepening simplicity um, of participation, and just kind of getting the sense of, oh yeah, this is, this is what I'm in the middle of right now, right? Of this vulnerability that we're just turning towards and noticing as it opens its eyes. And it's all about holding it from the very beginning. And, and right, that, that there was this, right? I mean, I mean, it's good that Johannes didn't do another um, Dicinawa interview because I, I, I was horrified. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the last one with the abandon all hope in order to enter um right. but right at the end where he talked about right the, the brutality he talked about violence where everything becomes kind of like a brute fact yeah and right what you just said right with your hands right and we even we even have these symbols for example in christianity like mary and and the christ and holding the christ and like um so right there's this deep care when you when you when you hold your child mm-hmm. um but that that, that if, if we don't have scole you you're right now right now right you're you're engaged in this very serious gentle play with your child right mm-hmm. perhaps i don't know how parents today would call it something mm-hmm. like quality time or yeah, yeah. <laughs> something something absurd like that um but you're in this right you're in this this mode of scolay with your child and care right right um participate in care and love these things are just there right you just participate in them yeah. um but then again it's it's so obvious right when we talk about human beings but it gets so it gets so weird when we talk about them beings things that are around us right then everyone mm-hmm. i don't know you throw away like you buy them and then you throw them away one week later or so yeah and that is kind of like that's kind of kind of like we become brutal and when the right when the principle withdraws then then we also become brutal to ourselves as a species mm-hmm. then we treat the strangers with with kind of like hatred we, we don't trust anyone mm-hmm. and that there's all this this is all a, this is all then connected to this i mean mm-hmm. so so we we can't if the principle withdraws then then violence arises mm-hmm. and then then you can't even then you are even right then I think this sometimes so some 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 parents give their their children very early right to the to like um, kindergartens and mm-hmm. these things and mm-hmm. and today today there's even right that there, there are I read this also in Byung Chul Han's book um, but I I see it also a lot that young mothers often are more concerned with their smartphone than with their own children right. Right. And that the children now have to f- fight in many cases for the attention of their their wow. parents. Yeah, yeah. Because the 
And I see this also because here there, there are a lot of young people here and, and I see many of them often like just walking with the like the the what is this a trolley or so mm -hmm. like where you where you carry the child and but also looking at the smartphone all the time. Yeah. yeah. And for the child, it's really important that the, that they see right the mother. That they have a, a direct that they, they see the mother all the time right? that they have a direct contact to just seeing the mother um but that that all that all gets twisted then if if we lose access if we we lose the participation to the principle because we we don't have these practices anymore and we, we don't have this right what what john calls right these other forms of knowing perspectival yeah. participatory yeah. thing these higher forms of knowing um then then we, we we also lose that and then then everything then everything becomes like did you now describe this so well in this interview everything becomes everything turns everything becomes violent everything becomes brutal yeah yeah totally well this is starts to get it this starts to get us this course that you're teaching um at the at the guild at, the, at our local at, at our at our local um, <laughs> at our, our our local philosophy shop. Um. <laughs> that's, that's that's good. <laughs> in this in this way that that one of the things I like about about Nishitani and and about Buddhism is it it really does you really get this sense with the the Philip the the philosophical sense and the sense of practice in Buddhism, that, um, it's it's harder to parse out and separate the two there. Because yeah. they for whatever reason that they just didn't they didn't uncouple um in my understanding, right? Like so every single part of the practice of Zen, you know, you just described it just the sitting, every single part of that posture of sitting still doing nothing is completely grounded in these deep understandings like mystical paradoxical understandings in just the simple sitting there so this kind of sense of practice that i think that i know john john hearkened about that in the in your guys's talk in your last interview which i really enjoyed your, your conversation with john where he was saying that you know his complaint about heidegger was was that he didn't he didn't do any practices i actually think i that's a point. That's a that's a point of contention. I think he's. I think John's right about that, in a literal sense. But in some sense, I think that Heidegger, in many ways, exemplified practicing philosophy. I think he 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 shows he shows philosophy as 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 a practice in itself in many ways. So there's some. I I have I have a disagree. I agree with him and I disagree with him about that. But I think one of the things that he highlighted with Nishitani in this book is that that, is, that in some sense to, to read Nishitani without meditating is not to read him. Yeah. And and right, I think Evil Dejanal would also disagree with that claim. But because um, right, he said Heidegger was he it's as if he invented a new sport. It's mm -hmm. kind of like this obsessive writing all the time. Yeah. From Right for for yeah, years and, and 10, 10 hours a day, yeah. And perhaps for for Heidegger, the practice was more about poetizing, mm -hmm. and and then perhaps also right when when he talks about the field path and and right he I mean he also lived in this hut, and I think mm -hmm. this is also kind of a form of practice, um, but it's not a it's. In, in Heidegger, everything, right? Everything's every, like he's so silent about things and, and so, so unexplicit in, in many ways <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that this also gets it's, 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 I mean, in Buddhism and in religion in general, this is much more explicit, I would say. It's mm -hmm. much more straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. So, in that sense, that sense, perhaps it's, it's easier to, to, to get what, what, what we're talking about. It. There's also then the problem, are we talking now about the same thing when mm -hmm. like what Heidegger did and what the Buddhists did? Because mm -hmm. Heidegger was Heidegger said explicitly once that he would not he would not recommend Westerners to practice Sam Buddhism. 
because mm -hmm. the the kind of like the the world the, the, the worlds are different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but anyways um mm -hmm. so yeah like the um in buddhism it's yeah it's much clearer definitely and mm -hmm. for example dogen the, the right is found of Zen in the mm -hmm. in the from the 12th cent, uh, 13th mm -hmm. century. Um, he, for example, he said, um, "You should just sit before you read anything, text of myself or a text of any other Chinese sage or so. You just you should just sit. Mm -hmm. You should yeah. practice. You should not you should not read anything be, be, before you have." um mm -hmm. sat down and really practiced sitting like mm -hmm. like rigorously for a while mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so really that the, the the practice aspect is much um is earlier comes before the, the right the, the more theoretical aspect of yeah 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 and so that so in confronting because you because you had I mean, you went to Japan, right? And you went to Japan. In some sense, it was kind of like dealing with your own nihilistic crisis. Yeah, like right? I, I just want to. I, I just want to get away, get out of Europe. <laughs> yeah, right. Get 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 out of the death of God. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and so, say, say a little. So let's yeah. Say, so for people that don't know you, say a little bit about about that. So you were. You went. Your reasons for going to Japan. You went for how long, and what was that like? And yeah, so so I I studied Japanese studies in Vienna, and I'm like kind of like this. This was pre pre uh, what what is the word? Um, I, just just before that, I had kind of like a, a nihilistic episode, <laughs> mm -hmm. and where I I perhaps as many young people have, I guess. Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. but kind of like for, for me I, I i had i had read a lot of books of about asia and i kind of like had a i mean i romanticized all of that a little bit perhaps um back then but i i mean i read a lot of nietzsche and dostoevsky and then also about the, the kind of like all, all the things that were, were going on in europe during the wars and um I really I really got got sensible let's say to this death of God this really this this European nihilism that that has t taken root in our culture mm. I was really it was really hit by that um, and then I just I was interested in Buddhism and, and meditation and Japanese literature and these things and I studied this and then I also had the opportunity to go to Japan and, and study there at the, the, the university in Kyoto. And yeah, there I kind of like, they also learned them a lot. And I mean, although my, my, my image of Japan turned drastically because right, it's, it's much, it, I mean, it's much more industrial that, that, than even where I live now. Like right. where, my rural, my rural area where I grew up. Yeah. So, so that was kind of like, and it's it's really it's this it's this weird it's this weird mixture. Like, people really, you you can see, for example, that they have these they have these rituals and traditions that kind of like they survive under the surface. Mm. But like like on the when you just go there as a tourist, you and you see all that that kind of like that modernist. Mm -hmm. um, appearance yeah. let's say um that that's all very it's it's very intrusive it's, almost yeah and, right it, it, also right it turns to society because if, right, if people people become sick people work a lot yeah people really go to great lengths to kind of like to be able to participate in this in this mad race that that's of progress right that that has started in europe right um and but but under the under the surface like all the traditions and often it it kind of like remains silent it, it's still there it's, mm -hmm. and you see it you see it really sometimes when i don't know when you go to at 5 a.m in the morning you go to, to a shrine and everything's still and and people go and, and take a moment because that their lives don't afford it much but they take five or ten minutes of kind of like just being in, in silence in the shrine or you see it you see it for example in all those they have holiday seasons which are also 
structure that's very different in in europe you can take holiday whenever you want basically mm -hmm. in japan that's not possible you you have free mm -hmm. holiday seasons and then like the whole country is 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 almost like not shut down but like on a on a they, they really they they shut down all services mm. in these free times during so these free holiday seasons which are mm. new year and now in august there's obon which is like a it's it's more like it's a buddhist death memorial day yeah where they also yeah. all go to their to their homes to the hometowns um and then the last one is the golden week which is in in late april and beginning of may um Hmm. and there they all take holiday <laughs> yeah if you want to travel there that's not good yeah don't... <laughs> yeah. yeah don't go during that time um, yes but, but but for example in during new year for example there's really there you can see right they, they really then participate in all these rituals and hmm. and there's there's still an, a, a sense of that religiosity which is really um declined yeah. um after the advent of of modernity right right and that's that's very fascinating all to see um that this very yeah. weird mixture of of tradition and modernity which is really which is really in mm -hmm. japan you really see it's very very strong yeah because because japan was just um, pretty much isolated until what the 1600s or something like that like until 1868 1868 yes and then yeah. then it underwent like rapid industrialization like the, in one generation basically they turned Japan from this kind of like pre-modern state to a to a modern state, yeah. which is right. which is really it's, it's that that Start. was really extreme. That's really yeah. um, so, and then they 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 had they got a new right they got a, the, the kind of like the um, the constitution they got from Prussia, which was mm. the best at the time. They got like the train system, like the the, the whole way how we make traffic from from England. Yeah, because that was the best at the time, and they that there were people just traveling through Europe and looking and picking things that were the, okay, that's that's the best and that we need for state building. So they yeah. they really made a conscious effort to build a na nation state, and 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 make make Japan a nation state, and then also with this kind of like nationalist ideology, yeah. such that it could compete in this kind of like struggle of nations that had emerged in the late 19th century wow for the cost of kind of like kind of like being what nishitani for example um says in in the self-overcoming of nihilism being right they, they they lost spiritual depth or they were not nobody was taking notice of this extreme anxiety that people like nietzsche had for example when right, Nietzsche was extremely anxious about the kind of like the collapse of everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And right. and that's kind of like that that no one paid attention to this and, and in mm -hmm. in Japan back then. Yeah, yeah. Well, in some sense that because essentially, like this is what in 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 religion and nothingness, this is, I mean, essentially Nishitani gives a deep, it's a deep appraisal of nihilism, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's. I mean, Nishitani even says that his his way of addressing nihilism was to plumbing into its depths and and yeah. overcoming it, overturning it yeah. by then by shunyata, right. which is emptiness or, or no thingness in in. Yeah. And so it's this really it's this it's this the European nihilism versus the Buddhist emptiness and kind yeah. of like kind of like bringing those two into a philosophical confrontation yeah that's that's religion and nothing right 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 so we get to that sense of where you know that that whole book is about like Nishitani's because that's it's just interesting how when you set it up setting it setting up the historical background of Japan right of in some sense they didn't undergo the thousands of years of right in Europe that just were the way where slowly modernity kind of seeps up Right. And people, there are generations that are born into it. So they don't know difference. Therefore, they don't see it. So versus Japan, 1860, <laughs> then boom, they get the, the la creme of the la creme 
of the modernist tradition, right? And so you have somebody two, three generations down from that looking at looking at this, right? Who now has philosophical acumen to kind of talk about it. And you, then you have Nishitani. So it's, this is, it's really this, Nishitani seems to be in this position to talk about nihilism that is, I don't know if you could get anywhere else, right? Mm. Other than Japan, which is stunning, you know? And right, even Nishida, so Nishitani's teacher, he was kind of like, he really managed to like, to like ingest and digest and creatively also appropriate and work with the whole Western tradition. Right. And like, he really, he really, it's stunning achievement. Yeah. And that's kind of like, yeah, really stunning. Um, And I mean, I mean, perhaps also clarifying this a little bit historically, I mean, there, there were people who wanted to trade with Japan even before. So that's also very famous that there were Christians there even in, in around 1600. Yes. And that there were like underground churches that were yes. suppressed. Um, so they really, and, and they, they had a little island where all the, the trades people were from like, yeah. from like the Dutch, Dutch and, and the Portuguese. Um, and, but they, they always kept them outside really they really like you stay on that island that's that's called dejima that, that island you stay there and they, they sometimes just had missions about it. but they, they were like i mean for example in, in i think in medicine so they 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 got something i think they that's called um so they they were i think then at some point in this period in those years of isolation they kind of like so for example in medicine like all the europeans are really better at medicine for example. Right. <laughs> that there right. was that was one that was one thing that 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 kind of like um that they that they knew but kind of like the, the, how the opening happened was then also by a, it's a, like there's a cultural theorist called morris berman um, mm-hmm. oh yeah book. yeah um I'm familiar with him yeah um he wrote a book about japan that's called neurotic beauty and he he thought that so so matthew perry like in u.s um navy mm-hmm. they were opening they were coming with black ships and forcefully saying to to japan you open your country now otherwise we invade it more mm. or less you you have to trade with us mm. and maurice Bor- berman thought that that was the first that was the first atom bomb well Kind of like, kind of like, yeah. and Nishitani also talks about this. They, they like the authorities in Japan. They, they didn't have a chance, kind of like, because yeah. like those those forces of science and modernization and progress were so forceful yeah. that you you would just you, you kind of like you risked you risked being colonized yeah. by, and kind of like that was kind of like the, this deep anxiety that the Japanese had at the time because they did not want to be colonized by the Europeans. Right. But, right. right this is the this is the yeah. fate that all the other countries had in, in Asia yeah. and around the world. Right. Um, so then they they really made an effort to kind of like modernize the country so they can mm-hmm. they can kind of like talk on the same level. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Well, I think it just, I, I, I think it's one of the things that we don't, it's hard for us to see, I think at this point in our history is, is actually how forceful our <laughs> way of making sense of things is, right? Like yeah. it's just, just that sense of just, you know, in some sense, them saying like, either we're going to invade you or you you trade with us. In some, in some way, that's I, I, how I heard that was whoever said that to them was probably like, look, it's just the way the world turns now. Like you either do yeah. this or like you're going to get invaded if it's by us or by somebody else. But at some point, you're going to submit to this, this force that has, no, that, that has no end. It has no, it's consuming everything, right? So in some sense, they're, yeah, God, that's so, I mean, that is just so intense to think about. But they, just one, that they were able to like keep it out, right, for that long is, is really interesting. There, there, there's, one, there's one really, really funny story. Um, 
funny, not not funny, interesting. Um, the, the like the Mongols also wanted to invade Japan and they failed, mm. and that that's because the Mongols really invaded everything. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they conquered everything, right. but they, they they couldn't invade Japan because they went as when they kind of like at the time they were they were kind of like with with their ships. And their, their ships were not as good as the Japanese ships. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, when they were coming with the ships, there was a typhoon coming. Mm -hmm. And um, that then became the, the kamikaze, then became right the, the suicide bombers in, in like the, the Second World War. But the original meaning is the wind of God. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. in the, when the Mongols were conquering the world mm -hmm. hundreds of years before, like the typhoon destroyed the whole the whole navy of the mongols oh, wow. and then they, they couldn't they couldn't invade japan yeah what they tried to and that, yeah. that was the wind of the gods and the, the japanese kind of like felt protected by the gods yeah kind of like blew all the ships away of the right. mongols right right oh interesting so it, it, it really it really was not invaded for for a long time and then you could right berman for example argues then right that um it was kind of like they weren't invaded, but in a sense they were because yeah. like like then after this this huge Americanization that that yeah. then was that after the war that could, could be an indicator for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally. like it's like they had to really they had really to, to change their culture mm -hmm. to, to a large extent. Right? Yeah, right. And, right. and and this is also right. This is in. in Today, this is affecting all countries, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we can't, you can't, you can't just withdraw from this progress thing, from this modernization, hyper modernization. Right, right. It's affecting, it's affecting everything. The whole, the whole planet, as as Heidegger said, the whole world is is uh, the Earth becomes a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is one of the things I feel more and more. You know, when we talk about philosophy, practicing mm. philosophy in this time, it's so interesting. It's so interesting because it's, it's a, in some sense, you have to take, like, you have to take account that, like, in some way, we're, we're taking up these deep questions in hell, <laughs> right? Like, is it, is it, uh, um, uh, uh, Ken Wilber talked about like, you know, he's got this kind of mapping. I have mixed feelings about Wilber, but like he's got, he's got uh, this mapping of, of reality and he's, and you know, people really get into the, to the map and the different terms and stuff like that. And he's like, look, remember, this is a map of hell. Reality is a map of hell. This is a, this is a map of, you know, basically our demise <laughs> in some mm. sense. Right. So I, I think, the, the more the more I sink into this and I be with other people that are sinking into this, the more the more it's kind of the risk that it's a, it's a real it's a risky on so many different levels, right? Um, because it's like to see this is to see is to see that you're it, in some sense that something's taken over that you just can't escape. It's like there is no escaping from this. Right, the question of how we respond to it, however, is the same question that human beings will, will always have, have always had. Right? What is it? What is it that? What is it that? What is it that organizes and has what shows up for us in the way that it shows up in a necessary response? And understanding what we're responding to, it, it's. In, in this time, it seems to be so, that seems to be what it is that you end up philosophizing about, right? Is, is, is how do you do that in this time? How do you make sense of things in this time, right? But in some way, it's, it's like, it's really on another level, it's no different than any human being throughout history is really the same, these, these deep questions, how are, however, I think that there's a way where we have to, I think it was what De Janeiro talked about, like, look, if you're going to be, you know, when he talked about practicing philosophy, when he talked about, you have to like really get, you have to really find your stance in relationship to science, right? And to art, 
right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so just in, so in some sense, I, I think what I'm, why I'm saying this is, is bringing this, this, this into to the, the course that you're teaching, right? And wh what, what is it that the course itself, what is it that Hulkion, right, as a, as a guild, that it's a guild, right? That it's on the internet, right? That all the things that we've been doing, in some sense, I, I think I, yeah, that's what I'm pointing to is like, I'm hearing the ring of like, what is that a response to, right? What, it, what are we, what are we, what is the fact that you're putting on this course about Nishitoni in this guild on the internet that we're having this conversation about? What is it, what's ringing? What's ringing and what are we responding to, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could throw out these words, right? The, the oblivion of being, <laughs> but there's, right? There, there is, there is something going on. So, so I just, I, I can just speak personally for myself. But when I, I just reflected, I had, I had Latin and Greek in school, um, in in high school, so um, like like Johannes, and there always was kind of for me there was this, there was right in in. All these myths and all, all of that that culture and the philosophy was so rich right also there was really something there and and in in our time the right when when i just read the history of the last century like right everyone was anxious like nietzsche was anxious and dostoevsky was anxious and heidegger was anxious they were all super anxious it was something something was not okay anymore and right, I mean, Nietzsche called it the death of God. We can talk about right. I mean, this has inter been interpreted so much, but you can see it again. You can see it in those in those little things. How we, for example, to, 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 today, like like love is becoming so so captured by by those tech platforms, for example, right? They really capture that. Communication is captured by by those machines, let's say, by those forces of rationalization. The, the things how we treat also our environment, how we, we live, right? I mean, it really it really affects your being. And that's yeah. that that kind of like that that famine, so to say, that 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 oblivion. That that's how to what we are responding to, yeah. and what Heidegger and Nishitani, I mean, also tried to respond to. Because again, this is to go back to the beginning of our conversation. It's a necessity. Yeah. This right. This it's this this need of right. Because right, right when you don't have a relation to the time, and when you don't have a relation, I mean, it's so obvious when you think about things like work as well, right? so many people today right they, they they hate their job they hate what they do and, um they they but they also don't right we we don't know how we can have a real relation to 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 um to time and to to to, to ourselves and to those we, we love right everything right and then we become isolated and depressed and, and all of that so that that's that's kind of like I think in, in those existential, um, just when we look at on our existence, I think then it becomes very yeah. clear well, what yeah. all of this is about. And also, right, in your case, Guy, with circling and dialogos, I mean, there's, right, right it's, it's about that to have real connection. Yeah. Real connection to other people yeah. and to, to be right, to, to, to meet. As, as I and Dao, so to say, and to have yeah. that real participation. Yeah. Where it's even right where we can, where, where I and Dao, they become one, so to say. Mm -hmm. that, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's one of the big things about this. I mean, I think one of the things, you know, phil philia Sophia, right? Philosophy, the philia, this kind of intimacy, this, this, um, this and in in that alone, just that there's intimacy that's something other than like familia or sexual, right? Mm. Are some things that I, I realize that some people have just never experienced, right? The, the the this kind of this particular love of friendship, of affinity, 
that one one shares, right? In in developing and being in such a way that you're you're actually co-participating in each other's development, right? In in a way. And the affinity that's afforded that and the, the deep sense of hope, like genuine hope that arises in that kind of relationship is not conceptual. Like it's 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 a it's a felt thing. And and there's a reason why this kind of goes into wisdom, right? Like, so it makes so much sense to me that, well, in some way, why I've asked myself the same thing with circling. What is, why circling? Why? Like, what, what had me even notice that? Like, why were, there, was there anybody to notice the thing that we noticed that then became circling? And why is that all, like, what the hell are people responding to? And in some sense, the, 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 the answer to that question is the unfolding of circling itself, right? And it, and, and in some ways, it's it's very simple in that there's a it's acknowledging the possible loss, but also one of the few places left where something like wisdom can be felt, right? Like something like a genuine um, wanting an unreasonable wanting to exist, right? And being grateful for existence in, 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 in the most radically simple way can be still felt. And if you can kind of feel yourself in that I thou, right? And Buber talked about this, spoken as one word, as you feel that drop in, there's something that just or self-organizes between the two that leads to this, this anagage, right? This sense of, of development that you can feel, right? Which is really the source of philosophy, right? So, so the, the so yes. Yeah, no, no, I've learned no, whatever, no. whatever Daniel goes like this, <laughs> point to say what? Center, yes, yes, centering, <laughs> say, no. say what, what, what is that thought? Yes. No, but, but you're right, right? And I just remembered this this passage from Byung Chul Han's book. So right, it's about again the, the German title is something like No Things Unding. Mm -hmm. Um and he talks right about how things, right? It's, it's, this book is so say a meditation on how we treat things, how we, we yeah. treat things. Yeah. And he says, right. He, he mentions a, a very, very popular German TV show where kind of like people go with, they say that they are the hard things that doesn't work. Is, it, it, there's a word in German, it's called hard things. So like, mm -hmm. like really, really something you, you, you really have cared a lot. Like mm -hmm. not, and, and today, right? Today we are surrounded just by smartphones that you, you I don't know, you throw away after a few years or you buy, or even your cars, right? of that um he also criticizes this kind of like sharing economy because you he kind of like it's it's kind of like he won't really want to strengthen the having mode yeah. saying and and but but having in this sense that you have something for example a book which you have for years and, and reread it and you have notes everywhere and you really you really grow or you, you really have a relationship to the book you yeah. really it really becomes something to your heart, so to say. Yeah. And then in this German TV show, they kind of like sell all these things and it kind of like, it becomes kind of like capitalized and yeah. captured by the market <laughs> logic and kind of like, right. Also kind yeah. of like put, put as a spectacle just for the TV show. And he, he criticized it. Um, okay. So, so, and it's really a meditation about how, how things kind of like, grow and become important to us and when you talk about circling right isn't that I, I wonder isn't that the same that we have to human beings right yes. because he says it needs so much time that that's why scholar is again important with time it mm -hmm. needs so much time so mm -hmm. that we 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 we, we um, create that kind of like uh, or, or participate with beings with things so so they really they really become near to us they become yeah. close to us it's yeah. easy and and um then you can really have have hard things so to say right. um and it's kind of um 
right? It's also with relationships today, and, and many people have really bad, very mm-hmm. quick relation. You, they last very quickly, right? You don't right. take time so much, and yeah. for for all these relationships, and you also right then then also people divorce themselves very very easily. They 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 go into mm-hmm. and it's it's like this relationship to 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 human beings but also things is kind of like it's so deep deeply coupled in a sense mm-hmm. it all it all has to do with with the loss of of yeah that that principle that homes all these relationships that yes. that gives them right that, yes. that gives them structure and meaning and the pole again with the pole yes. is yeah. um so it's just it's just that and, and what happens then when you have that that deep what, what what perhaps in circling what you can really train right when you think of circling circling is kind of like right it's a it's a gym it's a it's a, it's a it's yoga a, yeah. it's a relating gym so yeah totally. um, and and right and also what you learn in meditation is then what what happens is that beings disclose their mourners yeah and also human beings can disclose the mourners yes right? yes and yes. that's right that's also right love love in this deep sense and that's why it's a hard thing then it's really love in this deep thing affords us this right yes. also that that's that, that we can i think i think john would some, say something like this trans framing also that where we where we then participate yeah. really with the thing where we right. where we where we where it discloses kind of mourners to it that that yes. that is is concealed if we treat beings and things just as these no things that are non-things that that kind of like right that are just just linear and that really that we don't also really we don't really own them right the smartphone owns us mm-hmm. yeah. that's actually that's actually the case yeah it's not we yeah. we we don't have we don't have a real real relationship to those to to those things um right. and that that again it always then comes back to human relationships where it's then really becoming obvious yeah yeah, yeah totally totally right right well i mean just in our time it is a whole other thing but just in our time we went from i grew up in a world where it was just for example it was just it didn't, it wasn't even spoken. This is the, the way that you did, the way it would happen is you would go out in the world and you develop a life. And then somewhere along that life, you would meet somebody, <laughs> right? You would get to know each other. You'd get married, you'd have a family and da, 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 da. To in, in just a couple of years, I watched it go from that, right? To dating sites in this whole world of like, supermarket shopping for compatibility it in the way that we couple i it just just it, and so that that happened in just a couple of years i watched that happen right and in it because i i was at the time i was a trainer and so i had clients so i had like a just clients and you you do you know and you'd spend three hours a week with the client where basically you would just talk Right. You know, you, they'd work out, but then you talk between sets. So it's just, it's just, it was always this, this glimpse into somebody's life that who else do you know, do you spend three hours a week with every week, just their talk. Right. It's almost nobody. Right. So I'd, I'd watch these people who were single kind of confront these different people that they were dating. Like this one woman would sit, would call they, they, we, they, she would give her, give them numbers. <laughs> and she's like, I'm like, how's number is that number two or number three? It's like, and we got up to number seven at some time, at some point of like all the people that she was dating. And it was completely from this having mode, from this picking people based on compatibility. The whole thing was like that, right? And that happened in just a few years, right? That's a dramatic, that is dr- dramatic difference. And, and that, that it happened in such a way that was hardly even hardly even anybody addressed it right mm. this this way that like tech technicity kind of disappears so fast right is invisible to us but it's so candy when you like 
talk about it like this. I always try to make a, make it a point of of talking about these changes that happen and go, this is weird, isn't it? <laughs> to get in a relationship with it, because it because that's the that's the that's the recovery from it in some sense. If you can see its uncanniness and get a relationship with how strange it is that like we just in a few years we completely changed the way that we couple, right? And of course, that's, we don't even know what that actually means, but that's huge. And no one talked about it, right? Really, no one talked about it, about this, this, this drastic change, but it's, it's, it's dramatic. And I don't even think that we understand what that even means at this point. But like, yeah. So in some sense, you know, circling is, is this way of, it's a response to recognizing a, a non, like a, uh, relationship in the being mode. Like you could say that, I would say that that's the, that's the thing that's practice is, is in some sense, you're kind of setting up the being mode. And, and then, right. Then it also, then it also, if you practice be the, be, to be in the being mode, then right. It also comes and, and the having mode also really becomes like really, really then becomes like it, it requires a depth to it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I have a yeah. wife, I yeah. have a friend, yeah. I have a child. Yeah. And I really not not in the sense that I possess them. Yeah. But I, I, so yeah. this is what Han wants to do in the book, kind of like strengthening the having mode in this sense yeah. that it's not it's it's also then this have having I have a wife. Yeah. And I I so that they they really then they strengthen each other, so yeah. to say. Yeah. And then yeah. they really, really in this sense like because having in this sense, he thinks that having in this deep, deep, deep philosophical sense means also that um, you can trust it. Yeah. yeah. Just if you, you, you have a house yeah. and you kind of like you've built it and you've, you, you're curing it, you're cur curating it and you're caring about it. Yeah. And then it's, he, he says, he says about things, things hold us. Huh. Things, things hold us in yeah. the world yeah. by, by giving us, Right. If you have really, if you say like you have a, you have a table that 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 is is good and works, that holds you. Yeah. That gives you that is a pillar in your world. Yeah. That's that that gives you, that just holds you in that that sense. Right. Just right. You, if you have, and that's what things. So, so we participate with things such that they they really also give us security and and strength so to say they yes. they anchor us they anchor us yes. and so it's so so should it be with human beings mm -hmm. they should yeah. right so it's a co-anchoring almost what we yes. do yes by 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 participate by, by practicing the holding in the being mode we have a hold in the having mode <laughs> <laughs> something something like that yes um, yes yes this is great my friend any last things that you wanted to say before we yeah okay then one minute so so i'm teaching this course in johannes's Herkion guild mm -hmm. um this will start on saturday 21st of august and we'll go for eight weeks we have then so we have yeah, we go through the six chapters in the book, one per week in religion nothingness, which is Nishitani's um, like core or, or, or masterpiece or like really his core work. Um, and then we have one meditation seminar and then we have one pro seminar where you can present a talk. So if you're interested in all of that kind of like nihilism, the, the shunyata emptiness, kind of like also the, the dialogue between Christianity and Buddhism, also the problem of modernization and let's say religion, all of that is kind of like covered in, in Nishitani's book. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I can also, I think I will also send you some links for some yeah. further information. I'll put it all in the show notes for sure. Yeah. So awesome. That, that was really, that was really great. <laughs> it's awesome as usual, my friend. <laughs> all right. Have a great day. Bye-bye, guy. Bye -bye. Have a great day, too.